One inside, Carl. Oh, it's only a dream. <laughs> How's it going everybody? I'm Eric and welcome to the final episode of Out of the Groove. At least for 2016, I might come back and do this next season, that's still up in the air, but it's been a good run so far. 25 episodes, at least 2 or 3 hours of me talking, so I think I've done my job. And well, yesterday the season came to a close. Jimmy Johnson won the race and his record tying 7th championship. Carl Edwards seemed to have the best car out of the championship for most of the day, but on a late race restart, as y'all saw briefly in the preview there, he and Joey Logano got together, and Edwards got taken out completely, Logano got kind of put back in traffic, pretty much ended his championship hopes as well, although he would make a good run. Kyle Busch seemed to be pretty mediocre out of the championship contenders, ran top five most of the day, but didn't seem to be as strong as Edwards or Logano at a lot of, at a lot of different points. Uh, he ultimately finished third out of the four. And then, yeah, all other drivers, Kyle Larson also seemed to probably have the best car overall most of the night. I think he led the most laps, uh, but Jimmy got him on that final restart is why Larson didn't win. And there were some other little stories throughout it. I'll touch on those a little bit later on. But to start with, Jimmy Johnson, we need to take a minute to realize what we've witnessed here. Me personally, I became a NASCAR fan at I guess probably the worst possible time. I became a fan primarily in around 2005 is when I started watching all the races. And those of y'all who've kept up with NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson won his first championship in 2006. He didn't lose a championship again until 2011, and now he's won two more since then. So obviously if I was a Jimmy Johnson fan, I'd be super duper thumbs up all the way, baby. But since he's not my favorite driver, you know, it's it's getting old to see him win so much. That all being said, I will be the first one to stand up and say, this is, without a doubt, one of the most impressive sports runs I, I think that's ever happened. People always talk, like in the NBA, when they try, when people try to compare LeBron or Kobe to Michael Jordan, they're always like, no, you can't compare them to Jordan, not yet, you know? I always get the impression in NASCAR, you can compare Jimmy Johnson or Jeff Gordon or whoever to guys like Richard Petty or Dale Earnhardt, but everyone who's kind of been around a while will be like, no, you can't compare them just yet, you can't do that. Now? You can make a very real case that Jimmy Johnson is the greatest driver of all time. You can make a very convincing argument that Chad Knauss is the greatest crew chief of all time. Obviously, I'm no disrespect to Richard Petty or Dale Earnhardt, they're great obviously, but in my opinion, I think Jimmy Johnson is the greatest stock car driver in the history of the world right now. That's just me. You guys can argue with me all you want, but I personally believe it to be true at the moment. I mean, obviously, I know Richard Petty won 200 races, but you just gotta look at the eras that these people drove in. These days in NASCAR, everyone is so equal. There's 25 to 30 cars any given weekend that, you know, realistically have a chance to compete at least for a top 10. And now with the chase and everything, it's even more up in the air who's going to win the championship every year. And Jimmy Johnson's been able to break each system NASCAR has thrown at him. Back in the day with Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt, it was just two of the most points at the end of the season. And if you built up some strong momentum, it wasn't as much of a crapshoot. You really, it was really down to just a handful of dudes that had a chance every year. But with this chase and everything that Jimmy Johnson's had to work through, every season there's at least 10 to 15 guys that have pretty equal chances at a championship. You know, there's no one person that just comes in as the dominant favorite. And so the fact that Jimmy's been able to win seven championships in the last 11 seasons, that's just ridiculous. Obviously, I was not around to watch Richard Petty race, so, and I've only seen like highlights of Dale Earnhardt. So maybe my opinion isn't quite as valid as somebody else's, but. I you just look at what Jimmy, who Jimmy has to beat these days, who Chad Knauss has to set his car up better than every every single weekend, and you look at what they've done in the last decade. It's really you can't compare it to any. It's it's better than anything you've seen in any other sport, I, I, even NASCAR. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, how many other sports have had to make like total structural changes just to try and prevent one guy from winning. I mean, that's what the chase grid was. When it was created in 2014, it was in direct response to Jimmy's five straight championships and his championship in 2013. He, they were like, hey, he's won six of the last eight championships. We can't let this keep happening. Let's create a chase grid to make it more random. And it worked for him in 2014 and 15. Have Harvick and Bush won the championship. Jimmy Johnson didn't even make it out of the round of 12. But this season was different, and Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss once again beat the system and won a championship anyway. So for that, I'm actually kind of glad they won. I think it's hilarious that NASCAR just can't do anything to stop them. I mean, obviously, if you watch the race at Homestead, he did not have the best car of the championship for. He might have had the worst car of the championship for. And a 
couple of uh, fortunate scenarios had to take place for him to win the race. But in the end, you had to be there to, to have a chance. Jimmy was. He's won, he won several races this year. I mean, the 48 team was good. I think you'd be crazy to say they didn't earn this championship. So yeah, that's my rant about Jimmy Johnson. I'm just in awe, as much as I'm sure a lot of you guys are, at, at just how impressive this run has been. I mean, if I'm still a NASCAR fan in 20 years, and I'm looking back, and I'm talking to like friends, or even like my own kids or something like that, and I'm like, yeah, I watched NASCAR back in the day. They're going to be like, who did you root for, Dad? And I'll say, Matt Kenseth. Who? Exactly. No, but seriously, when I tell them, oh yeah, I watched when Jimmy Johnson ran and won his seven championships, potentially more, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jimmy get eight, nine, or even ten before he retires. My friends or kids or whoever will just be like, wow, that must have been amazing. And I'll sit there and be like, yeah, I guess it was kind of cool, but in reality, it was kind of annoying. <laughs> Anyway, no matter how you feel about Jimmy Johnson, at least you have something fun to tell people in the future. Oh yes, I saw him win that tie that record and probably break that record. And I, I'll bet he's going to win it again in a couple of years. It just seems natural to him at this point. So that's really all I have to say about Jimmy Johnson. This episode might be a hair longer just because it is the season finale, so brace yourselves. The big game-changing incident, similarly to what happened at Phoenix last week, happened on a late race restart. On a late race restart with, I think, about 10 laps to go, Kyle Larson was leading in the outside lane. Carl Edwards was second on the inside lane. Joey Logano was restarting third right behind Edwards, and the craziness happened. On the restart, Logano got a great jump. Edwards didn't really get a bad jump, just not quite as good as Logano's. Logano hung a left really hard to try and get to his inside and take him three wide into the into turn one. Edwards made an aggressive block. It really was not clear, so he kind of... his Logano was inside of him, so they made a little bit of contact. Edwards, it looked like he was just trying to hope that he could scare Logano into falling back in line and not pushing the issue. Logano knew it was on the line, though. He stayed in there, ultimately turned Edwards into the inside wall. He racked, slid up the track, collected several other drivers, no other chase contenders, but Kozlowski, Truex, a handful of other guys suffered. Casey Kane suffered some severe damage in the wreck. It was a... It was a gnarly one. That wreck allowed Kyle Busch to slip into third and Johnson to slip into fourth, which would uh, be important setting up the final uh, restart. In the end, I think most people saw it as a racing incident. You can't really blame either driver. From Edward's perspective, if you let Logano get to your inside and take you three wide and put you in the middle there, you might have had a slightly better car, but it was going to be really tough. There was a light, It was going to be a very tough scenario. You were probably going to lose the lead. You're going to lose the position to Logano. You're going to have to fight back. And it was not easy to pass at Homestead for most of the night. So with 10 to go or less... I, I think Edwards saw that as the race, and he needed to keep Logano behind him uh, when they went through one and two. Logano, at the same time, saw it as the race as well, because he knew exactly like what I just said. If he could get Edwards in the middle three wide, the air was going to be bad, the grip was going to be bad, everything was going to be bad. He was probably going to lose a couple positions. Logano was going to be able to get in front of him, and assuming they stayed green the rest of the way, I think it was going to be tough for anyone to catch the 22. So both drivers looked at that restart as the basically the race for the championship. They both knew their moves were overly aggressive, I think, but I think they both knew it was at stake. It didn't really benefit either of them in the end. It put Logano in the back. He had no chance. He was not able to catch back up to Jimmy. He got close, but he was not able to catch up. Edwards obviously was knocked out of the race. Just not, not good for either of them. But major props to Carl Edwards for being as cool of a dude as he was. He owned up to it, knew it was happening. He knew that it was a racing incident. He didn't go and blame Logano for everything. He didn't I mean, he just said what it was. He's like, hey, I knew I needed to hold the position. Logano knew he needed to get the position. It is what it is. It is it's it is how it is. And I, th it was very much respect to Carl Edwards for, for handling it the way he did. I still think Carl Edwards will win a championship in his career sometime. I thought this year was the year it was going to happen. It looked like it was. Uh, but just like we saw at Phoenix, one restart can change everything. Now, in my opinion, 2016 overall ended up being a very good, exciting NASCAR season had a lot of great moments we didn't see like the same kind of you know fights and stuff during the chase like we've seen the last couple of years but I think it proved we didn't need those things to keep the races entertaining I was I enjoyed pretty much every weekend even though as a Kenseth fan there was a lot of downs a lot of inconsistencies there but I still enjoyed watching the races every week and I had a lot of great moments. Let me know what some of you guys' favorite moments were from either the crazy last lap and photo finish at the Daytona 500 to uh, the photo finish between Carl Edwards and Harvick at Phoenix all sorts of stuff. We had the Talladega race back in spring that had a ton of big crashes. It was kind of ridiculous. It looked like a truck race. We had Daniel Suarez winning the Xfinity Championship. I didn't mention that, but that was awesome. I enjoyed seeing that. Don't get me started about Cole Witt. Tony Stewart got that big win at Sonoma in his final season. Kyle Larson got his first career win at Michigan. The drama at Phoenix with Kenseth and Logano and Kyle Busch. All in all, if you're a, just a pretty much a general fan of NASCAR, I think this, had, this season provided a lot of fun moments. Anyway, that's all I have time for in today's episode. Thank you guys so much 
For those of you who watched all 25 of these episodes, or even five of these episodes, thank you guys so much. Being in college like this, I just don't have the time or the space, literally, to make NASCAR parodies or Dudley Cup series, which I know is what most of you guys are probably subscribed for. I understand that. I hope to get back to those types of things as soon as I can. Uh, but just right now, this is what I was able to do. I enjoyed doing it. I hope most of you guys, at least the ones that continued to watch, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, enjoyed talking in the comments, listening to what I had to say, uh, even talking to me on Twitter, as I know some of you all have done before. Uh, I really appreciate all that stuff. I like to talk about NASCAR. I, like I've said in the past, none of my friends know anything about NASCAR. The only person in real life I can really talk to, to about NASCAR is my dad. So I enjoy talking to you guys either on YouTube in the comments or on Twitter because it's my only real outlet to talk about racing stuff. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. It really means a lot. Those of you, even if you're not just watching these videos, if you've watched all my other stuff in the past too and you gave these videos a chance and stuck with them throughout the series, I appreciate it. It means a ton to me. Uh, I'll be back. Christmas break is coming up soon. I get like a month off. I'll be back in Houston. I'm going to be, I have a couple big videos planned. Maybe some NASCAR stuff mixed in, so stay tuned there. That's what's called a teaser in the business. Uh, so look forward to that stuff. I, I'll have more news coming up on what more immediate changes to this channel because obviously now this show is done. I'm going to have to come up with something new and uh, that's going to be something. <laughs> so look forward to that. That's also a teaser, I suppose. Um, but yep, thanks again for watching Out of the Groove. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the NASCAR season. Congrats to Jimmy Johnson, Daniel Suarez, Johnny Sauter, all of the champions of NASCAR this year. Uh, it was a fun season. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. So that's all for me. Peace out, guys. No, Carl.